Gamers, today we have gathered here to create yet another guide. I haven't done a French guide in a while, actually, I think. It's been like six months, probably. This is going to be French COC 2TC guide, aka the French cock. And cock meaning chamber of commerce, of course. Short cock. This guide will be a French trade guide with 2TC and I'm going to explain you explain to you guys the thought process behind this. Uh, I mentioned in one of the tier list videos that top level Conquer players are playing a lot of French recently and, and you know people have been testing around how to play stuff and people have been testing around trade and um, there's an interesting development. Oh, did I tell you the best part about French? French is very good against English. If you're one of those players that cannot beat English or struggles against English or is meeting a lot of English on the ladder, I mean, there you go. So I'm gonna show you how to play it, what to do when, when to trade and so on and so forth. And this is probably weirdly enough, one of the more, uh, I would say, stable trade builds. And what I mean by that is like Abbasid trade build or Mongol trade build is kind of pretty YOLO or Malian. Like you're kind of committing to trade. But this one, I feel like is the least risky uh, trade build out of the, you know, five, I think it's five saves that, that can open trade and stuff like that. I feel like this one is the least risky one, which is kind of funny, but let's get into it. So, um, First things first, uh, this is something that you can do on pretty much every map. And if you are doing this build, I would suggest if the deer are not too far away, okay? So this is like somewhat close to your TC, right? But if the deer are, let's say here, you know, uh, if you look at my base, you don't want to do that. You don't want to send your villagers. But I scout the deer immediately with my scout. And if you manage to do that, you should send five workers onto the. Um, oh yeah, I'll, I'll thank you for reminding me. You should send five workers to the deer immediately. Why? Well, Chamber of Commerce um, landmark. The way it works is every time you get an economic upgrade, you make a trader for free. The trader is, is slowly making out of Chamber of Commerce for free. So, because of that, you need to get upgrades, and you need to have at least one upgrade. Uh, done by the time you reach feudal so that you instantly make a trader and you need to have um, another upgrade about to finish as you're hitting feudal so uh, because you're going to get these early upgrades you might as well go early mill and try to get some deer for faster gathering rate because you will you can get survival techniques immediately this is the cheapest uh, economic upgrade with forestry but it doesn't make sense for you to rush forestry right now so you can get actually pretty good value and this upgrade is only 25 seconds so once you upgrade this this is an economic upgrade so when your chamber of commerce finish you will already be making one trader so um we're gonna have five there we're gonna put three on sheep and then we're gonna put four on gold now if you don't find deer uh or if they're too far away i would uh you know just stay on sheep just stay eight on sheep four on gold like standard if you do find them early like this then do one of these um if you don't find deer as you're aging up just build a mill on your berries and get wheelbarrow as you're aging up or you can even get survival techniques if you want but i would probably suggest wheelbarrow and forestry first if you um do find deer like this you will get survival techniques and then you will get wheelbarrow and then forestry because wheelbarrow takes quite a long to research so um now, I do want to say, if you're playing against Ottoman, if you're playing against, um, like, maybe in your league, your uh, English players are going man-at-arms pretty often, then I would not suggest this. In this game, I played against HRE, so I, play, uh, I felt pretty safe doing this. But if you're playing against, like, China, or, you know, if you're playing against Mongols, you also don't want to do this. Uh, but any other save that's kind of more passive and you have more time, um, it's something you can do and, and not really suffer. Now, why do you only pull five? Uh, let me explain that. So the first time I did this build, I pulled seven, uh, or I had seven here. And then I realized that as I'm aging up, I only want four, five on food, preferably five. So if I want five on food and I pull seven, then I'm gonna have to drag two all the way back. So that's why I just put five here and that's it. 
Another thing that you can do is uh, once you age up, if you want to continue gathering the deer, you can just build a tower. Tower garrisons five villagers, so the villagers are going to be safe for a while. So that's another option you can do. Now, as I'm aging up, I'm going to start right now. I'm going to age up with four. Uh, I'm going to start collecting wood. I have five on food right here, which is going to be enough to sustain if I need to produce something and sustain villager production. Um, and I'm going to keep four on gold because I want to make sure I have all the upgrades, um, you know, start researching all the upgrades once I get fuel. Because again, you get free trader every time you finish an economic upgrade. No scope. So... Uh, as that is aging up, uh, you guys will be able to see the upgrades here, by the way, whatever I upgrade, you'll see it there. So if you're, you know, re-watching this video to see exactly when to do what, uh, you'll be able to, to see it. Now, why is this one of the, there you go, you see forestry. Um, I went forestry first because I was lacking a little bit of wood and now I'll force drop of gold and get wheelbarrow as well. Now, after that, um... The order of the upgrades you want to get, for example, if I get pushed back from food uh, to TC, the first upgrade I'm going to get is uh, a double broadax because I'm going to be making a second TC and I need production buildings. So double broadax is really good. Then I would get horticulture. But if I'm staying on deer, maybe I'll get double broadax and then mining, specialized mining, and then I'll get um, horticulture. So. The order of those upgrades doesn't matter as much as long as you get double broadex first. Now, why is this build safer than the others? Because it's a little bit of a bait and a lot of people fall for the bait. And you'll see uh, the guy I played against is a Conqueror 3 player and he kind of fell for the bait. And I'll show you guys uh, a little bit later what, about, what I mean by that. So the reason why it's a bait is because I actually am playing this off as a 2TC build. So I'm not going to be trading immediately. This trade route is pretty good, right? But I'm not going to be trading out immediately. Instead, what you do, this is very important. This is the whole point of the build and why this build works. You're going to be scouting your opponent um, as, you know, like right now, my opponent already aged up. So what am I scouting? In this case, HRE, I'm scouting. Did, is he rushing castle? He's not. He's not mining any gold. And is he going second TC? If he's going second TC, and this goes for all sieves, I would probably let my scout or my traders trade because he's going second TC. If he's making units, then I am not going to send the traders. Instead, I'm just going to keep them in my base, right? Because I got him for free. Free. I got, you know, I paid with upgrades, but uh, you get a lot of value out of it. So if the opponent is being aggressive, just don't trade. Don't send your traders until you have enough units to defend the trade. And then you just unleash all the traders. And on top of that, you will have 2TC. So your opponent, this is what I mean by the, it's like a bait. Because most people are like, oh shit, I gotta make units. And if you make units, you just don't trade. You get second TC, then you make units. And then you push back your opponent and then you start to trade. So you shouldn't look at like, oh my god, my traders are idle. That's really bad. That I'm already uh, uh, ahead the moment those traders come out. It's like I have extra workers. They're just not doing anything at that point. Okay. So so right now I'm scouting. And um, in a moment I'm going to see the, the stables and I'm going to see the barracks. So uh, what I did is I sent only one trader through because I was like, I think I can make it. And I did make it, although risky. So I would probably not suggest doing this. And behind this, like I said, uh, I'm getting, look at this, double broad axe, uh, specialized pick. Um, I'm going to get horticulture in a second. And remember, French upgrades are cheaper. So this is 3570. I'm making stables because I'm going to start making units so I can defend. I'm going to make archer ranger soon. And um, I'm going to remove two workers from the gold because I only want three workers on the gold so I can produce knights because I got all the other upgrade uh, that I needed. So if you look right this game th this is why this build works if you look at this game right now nothing happened yet right so i'm gonna wait for that finish okay nothing happened yet right we haven't fought i haven't lost anything he hasn't lost anything if you look at the upgrades i have three economic upgrades i'm getting horticulture 
I am producing traders, or I'm not producing, they're producing on their own, like I didn't use resources for this, and I'm getting a stable. So the only thing that's delayed for me is the production buildings, but in every other way, I'm currently ahead. And again, nothing has happened yet. And I'm gonna try to get the second TC up uh, as well, which is kind of the strength of this, uh, of this build, by the way. And yeah, now I'm gonna get further and further ahead because French TC produces villagers faster, which is another thing that's gonna get you ahead further, but also traders uh, count as villagers. So you can see already four workers ahead, which is pretty big. Even though two of those, uh, uh, two of those uh, three traders are idle, again, this is too risky for 50 gold as well. It's it's not worth it, right? But it doesn't matter that they're idle because eventually I'll, you know, make a, a use out of them. So he is clearly trying to prevent the trade. Um, and you can see he's scouting. He's scouting for market. He doesn't see market. And I don't think he saw the stone, which is the funny thing. Because he, he's trying to prevent trade. And you can see him running to prevent trade, but there is none. So... I started to produce knights. I got all the eco upgrades, so now I can use my gold on the knights. You don't need to produce extra traders, by the way. Just remember, you're already ahead, so you don't need to produce extra traders. You already have extra eco compared to him. The only thing you need now is army. So I have enough stone and wood for a TC. So in the perfect world, I would love to make a TC here to get these deer and berries. But there's actually a really good option here where I make TC here, get gold, and get two berry patches, and once I build a market, it kind of protects the market as well, which is really nice. So I go for that one, and I also know that his units are here. And he just passed that side, so the chances of him checking there are pretty low. But you can see, he keeps trying to interrupt the trade, but there is no trade. So right now, I'm gonna start producing knights, and uh, with the wood that I'm getting, I'm gonna start uh, getting archer ranges. And he is fully producing units, by the way. He is trying as hard as he can to stop the, the trade. He's even got blacksmith, he's got some workers on gold. He's now getting eco upgrades. I'm gonna wall this off so he can't like go around all the time. And he doesn't have anything to attack right now, right? So it turns into a little bit of a weird game. And uh, if you guys do this properly, I feel like, I mean, people in Conquer, I think, uh, respond to this wrong. But people in low leagues will be even more confused with what you're doing, by the way. Because most people are like, well, you made uh, cock. Where's the traders? Why are you not trading? What's happening? So I went to trade here, but I see Spearman. I, I was going to do one run, uh, but I was like, ah, fuck it. Let's not risk it. I went back in. And right now, I have 33 villagers, he has 30, plus I have 6 traders uh, for a total of 39 and now 40. So I'm making archers, he's still producing units, now he goes for a second TC, because he saw earlier that I have a second TC. But he's already behind in every way, right? There's not a single spot where he's doing better than I am. Oh, he is, army, but he can't get any fights. So now I do some reinforcement interruption. Why not? Getting more production here. I get my blacksmith. And now the army will slowly uh, be closer and closer to my opponent. He loses a... I, I sniped a scout here, which is pretty important because now he has no vision. I see his TC, which is very late. Again, look at the worker count. Not much is happening to this game. Um, and right now, I feel that, okay, I have enough units to defend. Because I see a bunch of units here, so I know that he only has a few horsemen here. So now, I start the trade. I'm gonna make a market. And again, I'm getting some gold here, so this is safe. And now the trade actually starts. So, 10.30 is the first real trade except that one little trip I made. I start walling off immediately. And look at that. 144 gold per trip. 
So this is times six, 840 gold, right? Is that the math? And a little bit extra, 864 gold, if I'm not mistaken, if my math is not off. Never do math in the stream. Um, so now, if you look at upgrades, very good for me. And I've had them for longer, so even if he catches up with eco upgrades, I still had them longer, so I got more value. Now I'm fully producing. I'm producing uh, soon two knights at the same time, I'm producing two archers at the same time. And this game, if you remember, he was ahead like 19 army to 3, and now it's 28 to 18, and I'm 20 eco ahead. Kek W. Now, the best part about this build is if I'm 2TC and the opponent is 2TC, I actually don't need to make traders. Okay? I can just let these six initial ones do their thing. You don't need to make more. Like, you are on 2TC, you produce villagers faster, and you have six active traders. Like, you don't need to make more traders. Don't. This, this is the. This is how you bait yourself into losing. You're gonna be over booming. Like imagine if I made like two markets here and also made the traders. I would have no army, right? So what would be the winning move from the enemy at this point? I mean nothing. It's like this is already terrible. And again, not much has happened. He just got debated into over committing to units. So now the situation would have been different if I played a normal Civ and I actually spent resources for six traders. That would delay my uh, units by quite a lot, so the game would have looked differently. But if you look at the army now, my army is a lot better than his because of knights. And I have so many archers that I'm almost at a point where I'm one-shotting horsemen. Still two-shotting, but you know, almost. I went to re-wall this because he killed my worker. I killed these guys right here. I'm just gathering food. And if you look, I have 0 on gold, 45 on food, 19 on wood. Uh, probably should keep, by the way, like 5, 6 on gold at this point. Uh, because my traders went all at the same time. So I got a, like whatever that amount was, 800 and something gold. And then I'm not getting anything for a while. So that's something you can do. Uh, and I am manually producing some traders here because I'm greedy, but you don't need to do that, okay? If I didn't produce these traders, I could have just aged up now, which is, is like Omega game over, right? So now I'm attacking his gold. I don't want him to like age up and get relics, so I'm just forcing him to fight with me because I know I'm ahead in eco. So if we fight and we trade evenly, I'll win out because my income is a lot higher. Or should be at least. Like this is with him under chapel by the way. With uh, some food. And uh, wood. And look at the incomes. Now I have zero on gold. But in a second. Like once they get delivered. It's going to be like you know 1k gold per minute as well. So we trade here. Um, I kind of lose my army. He kind of loses his army. But then I have another army ready to go so it's a pretty rough one now um yeah you can see now traders are coming seven eight nine traders coming with what was it 144 gold each so again um if you don't want to play it risky you could have just not made any extra traders and aged up i was a little greedy and you can see that i have way too much food um, I haven't played this build too much. I only played it like maybe two, three times. Um, but I would suggest leaving like five to eight workers um, on gold for a situation like this where now I'm just no gold whatsoever. But at this point, I knew it was um, over, so it didn't really matter. Um, so another thing that you can do, by the way, is uh, I completely forgot. But if you do manage to get like obscene amount of traders, um, where you got like 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or even 100, you can actually play with 100 traders with French because French has a unique thing to switch over traders to trade, not, not take gold, but to trade food or wood. Um, now, this can be useful sometimes, 
But, but, farms are better in the late game than trading food. Okay, so this is very important to note. Um, some people are like, oh, you can play French with zero villagers. You should not do that. Uh, farms are way better than um, traders in the late game. A, because um, not all your income is based off of just traders, which is always a good thing. And B, your 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 income is more consistent. So you're not waiting for masses of traders to unload food so you can produce. It's more consistent. And I actually think that gathering rate for a farm with a level 3 food upgrade is better than a trader going back and forth. Plus, food is a resource that you can constantly get with farms. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to trade. But it is an option if you ever miss it, right? If you maybe gather all the food and you don't have farms yet, you can put like... 30 traders on, far on uh, food just make sure you put them back eventually same thing when map gets like chopped down and there's no wood or if you're playing on prairie you can put some traders to uh, trade for wood instead but in general the way you want to play this is you want to have probably like 15 20 workers on uh, um, wood right now maybe even 25 if you're fully producing out of like three four archer ranges so you can produce units, so you can produce more buildings, produce walls, and if you want to produce traders. And most of your stuff should be on food, so you can fully commit to like mass knights. And then once you reach castle, you probably take like 10, 20 workers of food and put them on stone. So you can either stonewall your, your trade route, or so that you can, you know, start putting uh, keeps, like maybe put one keep here, so you reduce the cost of all your units around the keep. Or you can put keeps in the sacred sites or, you know, whatever else. And then, um, as you see food running out, make sure you put more and more workers onto the wood so you can actually make farms. But yeah, I think it's a new, cool way to play. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say it's OP or... Um, too strong or whatever, but I do think it's a really good way to play. It does take a little bit of practice to understand like when to release the traders to properly defend because you do not have you know stable once you age up with the landmark um, so you need to kind of understand that a little bit and against some sieves it's obviously harder to pull this off than against some other I would probably not advise you to do this against Malians um, but in general, especially against more passive saves, this should be more than, than enough. So I would probably suggest, you know, start doing this against like China, HRE, Abbasid, stuff like that. And once you feel more comfortable with uh, the play style and, and this strategy, maybe try it against, uh, you know, some of the harder saves like English, uh, Mongol that can punish you a lot easier. So, yeah, that's it. I think the game just ends here. I enter into the wood line and he just steps out because he starts losing way, way too much. When you reach castle, remember to get your eco upgrades immediately. Maybe not specialized pick, or you can actually for stone. But when you get your eco upgrades in castle, like the uh, second level of wood, uh, food gathering and, and uh, stone and gold gathering upgrade, uh, you will also produce three free traders from that so you can kind of get the value immediately as well because you should and also why not right you you could use eco upgrades so the best part about this build is like i said it baits your opponents into over committing to attack, attack the trade if they don't attack the trade well then you have two tc and trade and even if by the way i just want to just want to make sure you guys know this uh, even if the opponent stops your trade, maybe you lose three traders and you only got three, the game's not over because you still have two TC and your French that produces the uh, villagers faster. So, yeah. Which landmark for castle? Um, I would probably say it depends on how you play and how ahead you are. So, for example, in that game, because I was so far ahead, I would just try to kill my opponent very soon. So I would just go for Royal Institute to get biology uh, or Royal Bloodlines. But if it's more passive game or you're like, okay, I can't kill my opponents, it might go a super late game, probably Guild Hall and immediately put it on stone. Uh, but both can work, right? A Royal Institute is more like you have to, or you should try to finish the game in castle. 
uh, because if you enter Imperial with Royal Institute, it's basically wasted. Um, this is basically wasting a landmark, right? And then in Imperial, same thing. If you have a good trade and you know you don't see yourself losing in the late game, like because you have such big lead, you can go for um, Red Palace because it gives your TCs and keeps that unique um, attack, and it can also help you secure the trade. Um, on the other side, if your trade is already secured and you, it's the game is entering some kind of siege battle, then you can go for the. It's not really, it's, it's, it's something. You know, you got a landmark that you can produce culverins. Because if you enter some kind of siege battle, uh, oh, college, right, college of artillery, uh, you can produce culverins, which are obviously very much needed in any kind of siege battle. I haven't made a French guide in a while. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.